The following is a very versatile interview question asked at companies like Google, Facebook or Amazon. Depending on how the interviewer puts it, this could lead into a system design question, an algorithmic problem solution question or an object-oriented design question. Stay tuned! The problem statement. Design a parking lot. Let's say you are the owner of a parking lot and you have to manage maybe hundreds or even more of parking spots and you want a system which helps you manage it. So I'm sure a lot of possible solutions and a lot of approaches will come to your mind immediately. But at this point, early in the interview, the interviewer wants to see two things from you. The first one being handling ambiguity. So this means the interviewer wants to see that you are able to recognize the breadth of this problem statement. You want to ask some clarifying questions. And first of all, you should ask what kind of problem area he wants to get into. So you could just ask, do you want me to come up with a system design? Do you want me to come up with a class hierarchy? Or should we get into a certain specific question and then write some methods? Second, systematic approach. So the second thing the interviewer is probing and testing you for is how you approach the problem. You want to show a clear and systematic approach how you tackle this problem. So it helps to take a step back and don't rush into one solution immediately. And again, it's time to ask questions and it's time to clarify some assumptions. So those questions are always asked and so that they're not clear 100%. They're not 100% clear and they purposefully leave out details. And it's your job to ask and find out what details they left out. If you don't do it, you'll get a worse grade, so to say, in the interview and your chances of getting the job are lower. Okay, now, what kind of questions could you ask? If you, without thinking about system design or algorithms or anything, just think about what does a parking lot look like? So first question could be, how is this parking lot designed? Is this a building? Is this an open space? Um, are some parking lots only accessible if other parking lots are free? So this could be the first question, for example. Second question could be, how many spots are we talking about? Is this a parking lot with 10 spots or are we handling maybe thousands of spots in multiple buildings? Third question could be, does this parking lot have multiple levels? So is there a problem of how to get cars or vehicles from one level to another one? If you want to get into the very advanced things, you could get into the question, are there multiple entrances? And this already sounds a little bit like concurrency, right? So you could also discuss concurrency issues with this. And are there multiple levels, as I said, but are there maybe uh, dependencies between levels? So should we, should we fill up the upper level first and then go down? Should we optimize to fill up certain areas first? Um, and then you could get into the topic of price. So if we have multiple sizes of slots so if there are two or three different sizes of slots um, do they have different prices and what is the pricing strategy maybe a, a bigger slot to occupy is more expensive but if there are no more slots of the right size for this car should we think about making a fair pricing strategy and just charge for the type of vehicle the customer is putting in there instead of charging for the actual slot he occupies. And then lastly, if you want to drill down more into the business side of things, uh, maybe you want to mention premium parking spots or parking spots for people with a disability, which have to be in front of the entrance or parking spots, which are for some reason more expensive or cheaper than other ones. Uh, it doesn't hurt to mention those things because it's not only about how you code up this problem or draw it up, it's about how you think about it and 
with, with mentioning a lot of different topics from different areas, you show that you have a complete picture of the business. And in the end, it's about making money and being valuable to the customer. Okay, now let's assume that the interviewer pointed you to the right direction and you could clarify a lot of questions. Let's assume he wants you to design a system with four different sizes, uh, four different sizes of parking spots. So four sizes. And then there is a, a small, a medium, a large and an X large. So you could imagine the small is for motorcycles, um, the medium is for small cars, the large is for big cars, and the X large is for buses or something like that. So with that in mind, um, we had the question which was about which car to put in what kind of spot. So let's assume that you are allowed to put smaller cars in bigger lots, in bigger spots. So you could put a small car into the spot of a bus. So you, you are allowed to put a, a medium sized car into an XL sized car, into an XL sized spot or a large spot. But on the other hand, you're not allowed to, to put a large car into a small spot. And now we know more details about this problem and we should come up with a class hierarchy. So, Let's just think about the keywords we, we mentioned here. Uh, we want to represent and design uh, the parking lot system. So one of the classes will be the parking lot. Then you want to represent vehicles, cars, motorcycles, buses. And then you want to represent the spot itself. So maybe let's start with the vehicles. Um, we said there are some, some classes of spots, some, some different types of spots. And with, with cars and motorcycles and buses, they have a lot of things in common. So immediately, this should ring a bell and you should think about an inheritance, inheritance strategy. So we could have an abstract vehicle. So the abstract vehicle, for example, has um, a license plate because it's our main form of identification. And now you could store all kinds of information in this uh, abstract vehicle, something that all of the cars, motorcycles and buses and big cars and small cars have in common. So for example, it could make sense to have a, a color in there. So you see, I'm uh, using some sort of an enum here. Uh, probably the interviewer won't let you draw it out and, and write it out, but just mention that in case of a color, it makes sense to use an enum. Okay, now we have this abstract vehicle and you want to have implementations of this vehicle. And it makes sense to, to create four uh, different vehicles, so four classes, which inherit from this vehicle. Okay, so in this case, we have four different kind of vehicles. One is a car, one is a motorcycle, one is a bus, and one is a truck. So they would correspond to medium, small, X large, and large, right? So in your desired programming language, you could have something like this as a, a class hierarchy. So this one is the abstract one and those are 
implementations uh, of this abstract vehicle class. Okay, now let's see, we have a vehicle class and we can represent vehicles. What else do we need? We need some sort of a big system because we need to have a method or a function where we can place a car, we can put a car into the parking lot. So this big thing is represented by the parking lot. So it makes sense to have a parking lot class. And thinking about uh, a parameter to pass into a constructor, um, if we have multiple of those parking lots, because we maybe own multiple buildings with parking lots, um, we could give it something like a zip code. Now, what kind of method does this parking lot have to provide? Probably the most important one will be the situation where a driver of a car uh, comes into the parking lot and wants to put his car there. So we have to offer something like place car or place vehicle. And now we have to think what do we pass into this, this, mes this method and what do we return? So what we definitely pass is the abstract class here, a vehicle. And then we return uh, probably a spot, right? So now you already see we need a class parking spot. Okay, place vehicle, takes a vehicle, returns a spot. Uh, class spot in here should also have uh, some member variables. Uh, foremost, something like an ID. We have to identify this spot and we have to link it to the car, right? So because we, we want to use uh, another method to find the car and then free up that spot again if the car leaves the parking lot. So spot definitely has uh, an ID. Could be something like a long. And on the other hand, uh, we should probably mention where in which level this uh, spot could be and some other things and then what's also crucial is to mention the size of the spot so how do we represent uh, a size so you could think about using a number for it maybe an int um, but there is a little bit uh, a better way to do it with an enum so let's just use an enum now this starts to look pretty nice we have an abstract uh, vehicle, we have a little bit of an inheritance to those vehicle types. We have a parking lot with a, with a location and we have this crucial method of placing a vehicle. And we have a representation of a spot. So we could place a vehicle uh, into the parking garage. And if you want to do this and if the interviewer asks you to code some part of this, um, we're getting into the algorithmic uh, coding question. And for this, it makes sense to ask what kind of goal do we have with this? For example, one twist of this question could be you have to make the retrieving of a car, the placing and the retrieving of a car as efficient as possible. So you start thinking about how do we store this kind of information? In reality, and this makes sense to mention, in reality, there would be a database backend which stores all the information where our cars, uh, which kind of spots we have, uh, where are our parking lots and so on. So we came up with a pretty reasonable design uh, and classes and the interviewer could now ask you to implement some of it. So now we're getting into the algorithmic coding question and there will be some sort of goal uh, we have to optimize for or something we have to solve. So maybe the interviewer wants you to write uh, a method where you can place that vehicle um, and then also retrieve the vehicle again. So passing something like a license plate and then retrieving the vehicle and freeing up that spot again. And he could say something like make it as efficient as fast as possible to place the vehicle and also retrieve it and find it. Okay, what does that mean? In reality, there will be some sort of database backend where we store uh, all the vehicle and spot information. Let's say we abstract this away for this use case and all the vehicle information, and all the spot information 
where each vehicle stays is in memory. Okay, so we put in a vehicle and we have to store it in some kind of data structure. And this is mostly the point of those um, algorithmic interview questions that you have to choose the right kind of data structure. So um, we, we need to think about how to retrieve the first spot which is suitable for the kind of car we're getting. Okay, so place vehicle will have to find the first available spot and it makes sense to check first for a spot where this exact type of vehicle fits. So imagine we're getting um, one of those, or let's say a truck, right? We're getting a truck vehicle, and a vehicle with, with a size large. Um, we, we call place vehicle with it. And place vehicle will check uh, all our free truck spots, okay? So how do we store those spots? One option could be we just have an array or a list of spots. But that would mean that whenever we take a place vehicle call, um, we would have to run through each element of that list and check if that spot is free. So this would be a linear operation. That's probably not that nice because all we want to know is, is there a free spot? If yes, give it to me and let's place the car in there. So we could think about something like uh, maybe a stack where we have only open spaces in there. So maybe we're not as concerned about space, but more concerned about time, as the interviewer said with that goal. So you could keep uh, a stack where you have spots which are not occupied at that moment. And then if you go uh, into place vehicle and you get a truck, um, you have essentially three, three types of spots which, uh, which could fit this truck or sorry, one other which could fit this truck. So you could check uh, a stack for open spots for trucks. And because trucks also fit into the bus spot, you could have a second stack which only contains bus uh, spots and check if this one um, is, it has an available spot. So from a, from a linear operation, we just got down uh, to a constant because we're, we only have a, a finite amount of, of types so we check in this case one or two stacks and if both of them don't contain any uh, spots we just have to return an exception or something telling the customer no there are no more available spots okay now let's write down some of the things we just said okay so we mentioned place vehicle will call uh, multiple stacks so we need, in this case, four stacks and place vehicle itself will then be a constant operation. Okay, we mentioned that the place vehicle method um, uses four, uh, some sort of stacks, where as long as there is some element, as long as there is at least one element in each stack for each size, uh, this is a, a, a constant operation because we have only four sizes. So place vehicle for the search uh, is only an O of 1. Because uh, if we don't find um, a spot in the stack of uh, the, the appropriate size, may for example S or M, we, we just go down. So the worst case would be we have to do four lookups to find if there is a single free spot. Okay, then we know we can place the vehicle there. Um, and then in order to be efficient when removing and looking for the vehicle, we have to use the right data structure. So um, let's just give it a name. Let's say we need a remove vehicle where uh, we return um, also the spot of the, of the vehicle where, it, where the vehicle is at the moment. So the spot will then contain the spot ID or the location information about that.
Okay, so if we if we place the vehicle and we use something uh, like this stack or a linked list uh, or one of those data structures, um, when removing it, we don't know where the vehicle is at the moment. So we only know it's, uh, for example, a medium-sized vehicle. So it could be, if we again use multiple lists, it could be in the medium list of vehicles, or it could also been uh, placed in, in, the, in the small vehicle list. If we use, uh, instead of four single lists, if we use a big one, um, it's, it's going to be the same time complexity. We have to search through one big list and have a linear, uh, linear time complexity. So worst case would be uh, it's, it's, at the, it's at the last spot in that list. So we have to search through all the available spots. Uh, which is not it's not it's not going to be a good answer for the interviewer. So um, what kind of set of structures do we have? Um, could we use a heap? Could we use a tree? What do we want? We want fast lookup and always if you have some sort of a fast lookup operation if you need a fast lookup operation uh, what you have to think about is a hash map because with the hash map with the information of what exactly we're looking for the hash map is perfect in telling us uh, where the information for this exact uh, element is. So remove vehicle will take um, the vehicle and we are uh, after placing the vehicle and uh, checking for a spot we are doing a second operation here, which is put uh, in hash map. So when placing the vehicle, we put it in a hash map and uh, you could, for example, use multiple hash maps, um, but maybe if you have many different uh, sizes, you could gain a little bit from this uh, because you would you would uh, index and you could keep less uh, fewer fewer hash maps in the memory. But uh, in any case, if as long as you use a hash map, uh, O big O time complexity will stay the same, and we can do uh, a lookup uh, with a hash map. So uh, removing a vehicle takes, for example, the license plate of the vehicle as, uh, as the lookup key. And um, this is then just lookup in hash map. And that's uh, where we got the spot back and the spot contains the information about the vehicle. And that's all we need to place a vehicle and remove the vehicle again. Okay, now let's do a quick recap how we got to this point. We started with a very general design a parking lot question and we handled ambiguity. We tried to find out what exactly we want to get into and we, we thought about a systematic approach how to tackle this problem. So first step is actually a step back. Take a step back, think about what you want to achieve in here and ask a lot of questions so you know what the interviewer expects from you. And then starting off, uh, we, 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 we treated it like a, a system design question. We tried to find out about sizes, we tried to find out about pricing and all kinds of that stuff. And then we moved over into more of a object oriented question where we drew up a small class diagram and maybe the interviewer wanted to see some uh, classes coded. And uh, it's, it's always a good idea to, to write real code because interviewer want, the interviewers usually want to see that you are able to write clean, bug-free code. So um, tell them your, your favorite language, your, your language of choice, uh, whatever it may be, Java or C or C++, and um, write down some of the classes. In this case, you could have wrote, we could have written uh, the abstract vehicle class, 
the the, the car classes um, and also uh, the the parking lot class. So now we were at a at a system design question. We moved over to a, a object oriented design question, and then at the very end we we ended up with an algorithmic design question where we thought about what data structure to use and we came up with a with an algorithm which um, is very good in terms of time complexity maybe not the best in in memory complexity because we're keeping quite a lot of uh, uh, information in a hash map and in some other form uh, of a stack where we're just interested in free uh, spots so those four stacks here I mentioned, we're just keeping so that we, at every point in time, we know exactly um, if we have a free spot of every size. That's just optimization for time, so to say. So then we came up with the place vehicle and we said, placing uh, the vehicle, um, looking up a free spot just takes constant time because we check four of those stacks. Plus uh, we put into a hash map which on average uh, also takes uh, constant time. And then removing the vehicle <clears throat> um, is just a lookup in this hash map. Um, and when we said looking it up, we, we use, for example, the license plate uh, and we exactly know which vehicle uh, is where. We can remove it from this hash map. And then the very last step we do is just adding that free spot because we just removed the vehicle to the the, the stack where we uh, where the size fits so if this vehicle was uh, a car and it also was in uh, one of the medium sized spots we put it in the stack in here and that's all to it now if you want to get more into one of those questions and maybe you're very experienced in uh, interviewers want to to get deeper into more um, complex edge cases of this of this design. Um, as I mentioned, you could talk about concurrency. Uh, concurrency is a big issue if you have multiple uh, entrances, and you could run into some sort of race conditions when uh, your system uh, tries to access the same spot at the same time. So what what happens then? Uh, on the other hand, you could also uh, think about pricing strategies. So um, if you have different sizes in here and um, this system would then be self-managed, so to say, and the customer has to pay at the counter, you could think about a price system where either you get the customer gets the same price uh, for every spot or you give it to, you have to, to price him higher because he uses a bigger spot. Uh, the, the most important part about those kind of questions is uh, ask questions but then also take hints and let the interviewer lead you through the question because probably he, he has a list of things uh, on his mind where he has to test you and, and probe you and he, he for example wants to see you do well with the system design part or maybe he's just there to see your um, object-oriented design. So don't force your way into it, uh, take his hints and do what he wants and then do it uh, with, with, with confidence. Okay, this is today's video. I hope you liked it. There will be more system design questions on this channel. Um, if you want to see a certain interview question being treated and being explained like this, please leave comments and don't forget to subscribe. My name is Ramon Lopez. This is Success in Tech.